Go ahead. Thanks for having us, Dr. K. I am pleased to award you the 2220 Lifetime Achievement Award for your role in making Pyongyang an inclusive city with an unmatched lifestyle. It's an honor, Ms. Patel, especially coming from a renowned architectural engineer like you. You've seen the transition away from the military dictatorship of North Korea. Dr. Simran, you've long collaborated with Dr. K, isn't it? Correct. Back in his youth, seniors and the disabled were seen as unproductive and discarded from society, even pushed to suicide. Heavy military spending led to widespread poverty. Dr. K's vision for Pyongyang created welfare for everyone. Humans need independence, safety, and social connections. That's our village concept. In spite of a population of two million, today we all feel part of our community. The village and Elixir were the backbone of our engineering design. How did Elixir come about again? Elixir are our six human-centric principles anchoring our city design. E stands for economy. The aging, impaired, and disabled aid, in short, had to feel integrated and financially independent. With part-time jobs, just like Dr. K did. Instead of retiring, he shares his expertise with young bioengineers. I get to socialize, too. Next, L is for learning. Education supports a strong economy and promotes mental health and social integration. Seniors have countless opportunities to stay sharp through virtual or campus courses. I is for inclusivity, no more segregation or ageism. We value a sense of community for everyone. X is for exercise. All city parks and outdoor fitness facilities were designed for the young and for aid. Principle five is integration via the Internet of Things. We implemented smart technologies for sensing and monitoring, combined with data analytics to respond in real time and more personally to citizen needs. In emergency situations, police and safety drones are instantly dispatched. Finally, R for recreation. Pyongyang is a vibrant tourist hub thanks to a theme park and hotel resort along the Taedong River, the sports complex. Excuse me, I need to move a bit. I hate to be idle too long, even though my bionic suit gets me going on demand. In fact, the modular bionic suit was part of phase one. More than 35% of the population was geriatric or disabled. So phase one focused on wearable technologies, improving health and mobility. Biotech engineers connected the bionic suit to a smart living environment is powered through electrical impulses sent directly from the wearer's brain through implanted electrodes or chips. It enabled data collection harnessed by the city to improve problem response, reducing public expenses. The suit's reversible fabric keeps skin at a comfortable temperature in all conditions. It combines thermal engineering concepts with nanotube structures enabling new functionalities. We also integrated wearable medical technologies Bionic retinal cameras for the visually impaired, self-balancing shoes with piezo cells for fall prevention, defibrillators for heart patients, portable pancreas for diabetics. My grandmother also enjoys her augmented reality glasses, pre-programmed with directions associated with her daily routine. She won't get lost due to a memory loss episode. <sighs> That's why during phase two, the city council parted with building engineers to design smart living environments for A to live independently and safely. When I head to the bathroom in the morning, floor sensors have detected that I've gotten up. And while I brush my teeth, my mirror scans my facial features for potential signs of stroke or depression. I receive regular updates on my grandparents' wellness, thanks to data collected by smart toilets and sent directly to the central hospital. Yep, bioengineers exploited DNA sequencing. The smart toilet recognizes its user and carries out microbiota analysis, preventing viral outbreaks. This lab on chip technology is also applied to sewage wastewater. Connected to a smart citywide grid for public health strategies, these solutions resulted in a 40% healthcare savings. To counteract isolation, Computer engineers equipped homes with state-of-the-art digital communications. I have appointments through the digital media wall. It saves me a trip and money, too. There were concerns about privacy, 
hacking, and internet reliance. But we took precautions to mitigate them through data anonymity, access limitation, and cybersecurity compartmentalization. Phase three moved to citywide planning with Elixir. Design requirements stress scalability, autonomy, and community. Everything I need is located within my village. The Beehive design allows for shared strategic resources. Do you remember we brainstormed that solution when we were researching biomimetic concepts? Although we redesigned a little after consulting with the medical community, we included a village specifically designed for round-the-clock care. Accessibility is essential for aid, so we created an interconnected transportation infrastructure with mass underground transit. Age-friendly transportation devices, such as communal pods and walk cars, are so convenient, everyone uses them. And old roads got converted into a network of parks and paths for biking, walking, and moving walkways, ideal for aid. They are coated with biophotovoltaic panels, where cyanobacteria convert light to power for walkways. Speaking of power, wind turbines are incorporated into parks as art, and dams on the Taedong produce energy and clean the water. And microgrids prevent citywide shortages and ward off potential threats. For sustainability and efficiency, rainwater is collected and purified, while gray water is used for growing food in the urban vertical ecology towers. Our city became inclusive and resilient thanks to its modular design, supported by powerful data analytics across all city services. Dr. K, it's such a pleasure to see your work recognized. Everyone will go through aging and needing help. You know, a wise man once said that the greatest cruelty is our casual blindness to the despair of others. That's why, here in Pyongyang, we have tried so hard not to be blind. Now I would like to ask a question, if I could, please. Um, what trade-offs or compromises do you make while, did you make while uh, designing your age-friendly city? A major trade-off was tax, the, taxing our citizens. As all cities have to do, as all cities do, we tax our citizens. But it, as doing Sin City, we learned that if we tax our citizens too much, our infrastructure will be great, but the citizens won't be happy. And if we tax them too little, the infrastructure will not be as good. So and we needed to find the perfect balance. Another trade-off we found was privacy. We have several scanners all over our city, such as in the independent smart living environments, which help improve the city life and life at home and the efficiency. But we took precautions to mitigate them through data anonymity and cybersecurity compartmentalization. This way, the data remains anonymous uh, from only the user, the IT hub, the hospital, and the family members of the resident. What would you say is your most innovative aspect of your age-friendly city? I'd say it would be the uh, independent smart living environment because it, it allows people to live at home safely and have a high quality of life through a bunch of scanners that enable them to enable doctors to see and family and friends to see how the resident is doing. This way, the elderly population can be safe and independent. The sensors in the home are also unnoticeable, so they're very simple to use. Thank you. I have, I have a question. With the integration of technology into the living spaces, how do you ensure that, uh, that people and the seniors stay connected to their communities versus becoming overly reliant on so our city, sorry, Our city is based on a hexagonal design, where each hexagon is its own mini village or its own city. This enhances community life between citizens. We also have the digital media wall in residences, which allows people who cannot normally socialize to socialize through augmented reality platforms. Also, old roads were converted into parks, so the elderly can go to those parks and meet with other people their age or younger to provide mentorship. What types of jobs do you have um, in your industrial and commercial zones? So, our, one of our main industries is R&D. We have several different engineers and scientists pairing with 
university students and industrial sites to use new, find new materials and use them to make life in our city more efficient and have a higher quality of life. Biotech and computer engineers are also very important. Computer engineers designed our programmed and designed our smart living environment and the bionic suit and connected it to the rest of the city, especially the central hospital. During the design process, can you share an example where you guys disagreed and how you worked through it? In the beginning, we had to brainstorm what city we were going to do. However, many people had different ideas. So, for example, someone wanted to have a city in India. So we, took, we solved that problem by creating presentations and then voting on the best city. Another disagreement we ran into is building the model. M many different people had ideas of where buildings should go or where we should place our zoning. So we would each state our ideas and either combine them or, as she said, we would vote. Where does your water supply come from? So the, we had a set of principles or philosophy for our water system. We wanted the water to be the water sources to be decentralized, and we wanted fresh, clean water to be accessible to everyone. One, one of our sources of water is the Taedong River. The water is cleaned and purified through our dams and comes out through the water purification plant, which is also a major tourist attraction. In our UVETs, we also take gray water, which is, for example, storm drainage, or black water, which is waste, and we use that to farm in our UVETs. What, in algae tanks, we use gray water, and as the algae grows, it purifies water, and once we harvest the algae to turn it into flour, we, harvest, we collect that water and use it for drinking and other purpose, human purposes. How do you fund your city um, operations? So uh, before, in the 21st century, 40% of our population was not integrated to, into the economy. So by adding them in with, through, various, through various jobs, such as at the UVETs, it, it boosts our, am I allowed to finish? <laughs> oh, yeah. It boosts our economy by 40%. Nice work, North Carolina.